Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to talk about Tesla's full self-driving and first of all, I'm going to give you an explanation of what it is. And then we're going to see the different kind of cameras that, that, that is on the Tesla and some of the approaches they're taking to solve this full self-driving problem. So the vehicle can drive around itself without no, um, without no driver. So first of all here, we're going to talk, uh, talk about these cameras and the sensors uh, that is on the Tesla. So first of all, it has eight cameras where it has three cameras in the front. First of all here, it has this forward looking side camera so you can see like a, a, a wide view out um, in the front of the vehicle here. And then it also has a main forward camera that can see out to 150 meters. And then it also has a narrow forward camera that has a longer distance than the main forward camera. So the main camera that, that, it, that it's driving on in the front is the main, is the main forward camera here. And then for like a uh, longer distance is using this narrow forward camera. And then when it has to see something that is like uh, in, 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 the, in the wider field of view uh, in the front of the car, then it's using the wide forward camera here. And we're going to talk about like they're using all these cameras here in a sequential like, so they all, it, they're all put together to, to one frame. So we're going to talk about that and how they, how to use that approach to solve full cell driving. So it also has two rear reward looking side cameras. So on the side of the car, they have two cameras that is looking backwards and then they can see like um, everything uh, uh, behind the car here and also have a rear view camera here um, at, in, in the, um, at the back of the car here and then it has a, a wide view uh, close to the car at the back here. So that camera is placed at the back of the car. And then for the sides here, it just uses ultrasonic sensors so it can measure uh, distances to other obstacles around the car here. So it doesn't like really have any, any view here with the camera, but um, for obstacles in, in, this, in the sides of the car, it uses, um, it uses ultras ultrasonic sensors. So the computer vision approach they're using here, like Tesla is using computer vision um, as the main thing when they're going to solve full cell turn. And they don't use any lighters uh, and any uh, like other stuff like that. They're only using computer vision together with uh, radar. So they're using radar for, for for some distance measurements and also for some uh, velocity predictions and estimations of other vehicles and and objects. So this is the computer vision approach they're using, and they're doing a lot of different kind of detections in the frames. So we can see some of the examples here, what the camera sees when, when the Tesla car is driving around um, in full cell driving. So it detects like all of the obstacles around that is, uh, that is relevant to the car and also detects the lines that in the road that it's driving on and also like some of the other information from the images. So we can see that we get these boundary boxes here around the cars, which is actually like detection. So it's these, these uh, 3D boundary boxes. And at the end of each vehicle, um, it actually like has a dot, so that tells that it's the back of the vehicle, and it's actually like the detections from the radar. So like we can measure here, for example, uh, the distance to each vehicle. We can see like these numbers here. Um, it is the distances. Um, it's the distances to the to the um, to the objects relative from the car, and then it uses both vision and also the radar to do the actual like estimations of the distances to different kind of objects. And we can also see like it detects the stop sign here and then it also detects like the line here which it should stop at and then we can also see some different kind of information with numbers and also uh, the stop sign up here so in this example here it detects the stop sign here and then the car has to go up to this red line here that it has predicted that this is the stop line um, so all of these things here are outputs from neural networks so tesla is using computer vision uh, with neural networks where they're just feeding the frames to the neural networks and then all, all the neural networks, uh, they're doing the actual predictions of the vehicles, like uh, vehicles and pedestrians, other different kind of objects and also the stop signs um, and traffic lights and all the objects are just um, outputs from the neural networks that they have trained on by just using all the data that they're gathering uh, by driving around. So it also has some other different kind of information here, like how much the, the, how much the camera is blinded or if it's raining or if the, if the, if the road is wet, wet or stuff, stuff like that. So the, all these uh, different kind of factors here has an effect on the output from the neural networks or like, um, like the, the output that the car is going to take. So um, maybe, maybe like the speed or something like that is affected by if it's raining or, or if some of the cameras are blinded. So these factors, uh, like these factors here also affects um, the decision the car is making when it's driving around. And we can also see some different kind of other information with like for example lane change here left or and we can also see like uh, the frames per seconds uh, so right now it has 13 it gets in 13 seconds per uh, per second and then it does all the predictions on each frame here 
uh, when it's driving around in the environment and also doing all the estimations and calculations um, on all of these frames here. So one of the most important things here for Tesla to be able to solve full thread drawing is that they rewrite off their code. So Elon talked about that they, they rewrote all of the code from, so they get like from two, two and a half D to four dimensions. So what he means by four dimension is that now they're taking in like all of the frames from the, from the eight cameras and then they're combining them to one frame. And then they're doing analysis and the estimations and predictions on, 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 on the eight camera frames and in one frame instead of just taking the eight individual cameras. And then they just took one frame from all the individual cameras and did a prediction on that. So now we have these sequential images here where everything is put together into one frame. So we can also use some of the frames together. And for example, if we take an example here, that is that is really, really important for being for, for being able to, uh, to solve full cell driving, is that for example, if we're driving on a, on a road here and we see a trash can, for example, then now with these sequential images, we can now see from one frame to the other frame that if, if the trash can has moved, then we can see that it's, it's a dynamic object. And it, if it hasn't moved for like a number of frames, then we can see that this is an aesthetic object. This is a trash can. We don't expect this trash can, trash can to go out in front of the car. So that doesn't have an, an impact on the car's predictions um, later on. Whereas if we, for example, have a dog that is walking or like a pedestrian uh, that is walking uh, on the side of the road, then then the actual like car can see from the sequential images if if the car if the cat or dog or or like the pedestrian is approaching the um, is approaching the car or if it's like moving away from the road or stuff like that so it's a very important information for the car uh, to do at the actual the, like the decisions because because then you can see like if this person is is attended or like is already like moving uh, out towards the car or like on the road and then it will take that into account when it's when it's making its predictions uh, when it's driving around with these sequential images here. So this is like just, we have eight cameras where just in front of us, we can just see eight images from all of the eight cameras in one frame. And then we do a prediction like 13 times a second as we just talked about, uh, if they have 13 seconds uh, frames per second. So that is very important and very like crucial for being able to full, uh, solve full trail driving is to like, could, could, is being able to see the difference between static and dynamic objects and use, use that um, in our decision making. So this is the visualization for the full cell driving currently. It is currently in, in beta. So this is the visualization here where we have this Tesla car here uh, that is driving around. And then we can see like all of the predictions here and all of the output here from the neural networks that it, uh, when it's driving around. So these are like all of the predictions here that it's doing and we already seen what the camera sees, but this is just like uh, a 3D uh, visualization of what is going on in the computer and with the cameras. So we can see that we, we detect all of these vehicles here around the car here and that we have these boundary boxes. And this is the circle at the back of each vehicle here that I'm talking about. So we know like the orientation of the vehicle and we also know like we can now um, detect or like estimate um, and calculate the distance towards all of these vehicles here um, at the end of, at the back of them. And then we can see that there's some different kind of uh, color uh, colors here in the visualization so they all have different kind of meanings like for example here we have these blue blue uh, blue boxes here which is just like the vehicles around the car and then we have the green one here which is just because the, we are now following this um this car here so it's a lead car so it will be green and now we're just following that car uh, with our tesla and we can also see that it detects all the lines here and we also have some yellow yellow cars here and some uh, some purple cars over here and they all have different kind of meanings like if they're coming uh, towards the car or if they're going away from the car and if, if, if they're important to the car they have some different kind of color information and we can also see like we detect the, um, the, um, the traffic lights up here uh, we have like detect the green here and red over here in the, in the left turning lane and we also have a prediction like every time the, the car is driving around it has this prediction of the path that it's going to take so to say that we have like for example on a road we have a parked car um, then it needs to detect that this car is parked and we have to go around it. And then this trajectory here um, will will be like changed and it will make a prediction like which way should it go. So it could be like, for example, that it, it has to go like this. So this is the predicted uh, trajectory. But in this case here, it's just like the predicted trajectory and the trajectory that the car is going to take. It's just straightforward here in this uh, traffic light or intersection here and just following this car. So this is the visualization of the full cell running and it's really cool and it gets it gets improved all the time. 
So to make all these things account things here happening um, happen, like we need the, the full cell tower and computer, and this is the computer that is inside like all of the all of the set Teslas um, that is doing the actual like predictions and of the neural networks. So Tesla is training uh, the neural networks on all of the data, and then when when the neural network is trained and tested and it needs to be deployed in the cars, then there will just be a software update that gets. Um, that gets flashed down to this full cell tower computer here, and this this then this computer here is actually like doing all the different kind of calculations and operations and predictions with the neural networks, um, and so the model is running on this computer here, and we actually like ha have two identical computers on full cell tower computer here, so we can see like we have one computer in, on this side here, and we have then we have an identical computer on this side here as well. So all of this here is actually like just a redundant computer that is put into the, into the Tesla car here. But the main purpose of this here is that that both of the computers here are doing the actual like the same um, the same predictions, and then they match all of the outputs and predictions from both the computers and see if they match. So if both the outputs from both the computers match, then they then they know that this is a good prediction and it is really like certain that this is a good um, that this is a good uh, like operation or like action to take, and then it just takes that action if both the computers are are um, are the same outputs. So if for example, we say that this computer over here predicts uh, something else from the other one, then it needs to like um, be a bit more um, hesitant or like do some other different kind or, or wait for the next prediction to do an actual prediction until both computers have the same prediction. Um, so they are so they're sort of certain that this is a really good action to take. So this is really um, important when we're talking about full cell driving and when we have a car that is driving around with no driver uh, to have this diff uh, have this uh, certainty here and it just makes the operations um, so fast and a lot faster than a human. Um, so this is really essential for being able to fo so, uh, solve full tri cell driving is also like the hardware here that Tesla has and they're even working now on a dojo computer which is a supercomputer. Um, that is just um, in a data center and then it can like do the actual like training of the neural networks uh, to train neural networks faster and stuff like that and and the possibilities for well, for using dojo also in the vehicle to do actual like predictions and just sending the images or like the frames and information to to the dojo supercomputer and then gets like the outputs or like predictions actions to take um, from that again like that's also a possibility in the future but right now the cell driving computer here inside of the car um, just gets the model or like the neural networks model inside of the computer and then it does all of the regions on this computer here um, in the Tesla and then the outputs gets fed to like um, uh, the accelerator and the steering wheel. So this is like how full cell driving works in Tesla and we're talking about the different kind of approaches to take. So the full uh, full rewrite of the code, so they now have four dimensions. So to see all, eight, eight, all the eight um, cameras frames at the same time and then they actually like have se sequential frames or images so they can see like what happened from the next frame, um, or, like what happened in this frame and then the next frame and then they compare like what happened if there's any static or like um, moving objects should we take that into account and there's also some other different kind of information with the weather conditions and the road conditions and also like the, just the, the different kind of detections of the obstacles and vehicles and all the calculations of the distances um, and orientation of the different kind of vehicles and also the other uh, obstacles and pedestrians. So all these things here are essential for uh, f solving full self driving and, and Tesla is already like um, very, very long in the way and they are now having the beta out and, and some people are testing the actual like beta and it, and it gets another, a new update um, every like week or like uh, 10 days. So it's really essential and Tesla is doing a really good um, job. So that's it for this video guys here. I really hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new about um, how Tesla is solving full cell driving and some of the approaches they take. So remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification on the video and also like this video here if you like the content and you want more of it in the future. Uh, I really appreciate the support. So I'm currently also doing a computer vision tutorial if you're more into like how computer vision actually like works under the hood and some of the functions or like methods and approaches that Tesla uses. I also have a computer vision tutorial uh, with OpenCV in C++ and I'm also having a deep learning tutorial where you're currently talking about like um, neural networks. So these are the, some of the approaches that Tesla also uses. So they use computer vision together uh, with deep learning. So I have tutorials on that. So if you're interested in going more depth with that, I'll, I'll link to one of them up here or else I'll just see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.